رسول يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم مثل الذين حملوا التوراة ثم لم يحملوها ثم لم يحملوها كمثل الحمار كمثل الحمار يحمل أسفارا آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد إمام أبي عبد الله الحسين صلوات الله عليه وسلامه had a very good tremendous relationship between him and the Holy Quran and when we look at the Holy Quran we come to understand that this holy book number one it is a holy book it is a very special book it is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran is the book of guidance Quran in it there are many fantastic stories and all of them are true stories. They are not fairy tales. These are the stories from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at the Holy Quran in that way, whatever we read from the Holy Quran, we take it serious. Because it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we understand that these nice, nice stories, when we read them and then we understand them and then we apply them in our lives we will see that our lives will change and in the holy quran as we understand there is information information of the people who are before us information of those events which will come after our death information about akhirah in the holy quran we know that there are laws many types of laws and in the holy quran there are morals and akhlaq for us to emulate quran is kitabullah kitabullah alladhi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arsalahu ilayna lil hidaya fi al quran al karim kama na'rif anna hunaka qisas wa tilka al qisas qisas yani hiya haqiqa laysa ustura هي من الله سبحانه وتعالى والله سبحانه وتعالى أرسل إلى رسولنا هذا الكتاب لكي نهتدي به حيث القرآن هو نور أنزله الله إلينا للهداية في القرآن الكريم هناك أخبار أخبار للأمم التي كانت قبلنا والتي سوف تأتي بعدنا وأخبار حول الآخرة وما شابه ذلك في القرآن الكريم أحكام 
هذه الأحكام كلها إذا طبقناها سوف نعيش حياة طيبة وهناك في القرآن الكريم دروس أخلاقية قيمة علينا أن نتدبر في هذه الدروس والسؤال المهم الذي نريد أن نسأل أنفسنا في هذه الليلة ماذا كانت العلاقة بين الإمام أبي عبد الله الحسين عليه السلام والقرآن الكريم ولقد قرأنا في سورة الجمعة في سورة الجمعة سورة هذه التي نقرأها في كل جمعة في الصلاة الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول في الآية الثانية بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم مثل الذين حملوا التوراة ثم لم يحملوها كمثل الحمار يحمل أسفارا هذه الآية مهمة جدا لنتدبر فيها فإن شاء الله تعالى سوف نتكلم عن العلاقة التي كانت بين الإمام الحسين عليه السلام والقرآن الكريم وإن شاء الله تعالى في الأخير نريد أن نعرف من أصحاب الإمام أبي عبد الله من منهم الذي ذكره الإمام عليه السلام باسمه والذي كان يهتم بقراءة القرآن صلوا على محمد وآل محمد نعم الله سبحانه وتعالى إن سورة الجمعة سورة نمبر 62 in the Holy Quran He says clearly ayah number two Every week we read this ayah Every week when we attend Salatul Juma, it is mustahab for the Imam to recite in the first raka'ah, Surat Al-Fatiha and Surat Al-Juma. In the second raka'ah, Surat Al-Fatiha and another surah. Raka'ah, surah number 62, ayah number 2. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Mathalu al-lazina hummilu al-tawrah. Example and parable of those who are given Torah to carry it. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا Then they did not apply the teachings of Torah. They did not carry it properly. كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ Their example is like a donkey. يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارَ The donkey who carries books. Books full of knowledge. But the donkey doesn't know what am I carrying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the parable and the example of the people who are given Torah, the book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they did not apply, they become like a donkey. Now, when we look at this ayah in Surah Al-Jum'ah, Surah Al-Jum'ah is the surah which we read it every Jum'ah and every other times. So this Surah Jum'ah and the Holy Quran is not for the people who are given Torah. So what does it mean? The lesson which you are learning here is like مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُ الْقُرْآنِ Remove the word Torah, put the word Quran. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُ الْقُرْآنِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارَ The example of those people who have been given Quran, even though the Holy Quran mentions Torah, but for us, it is as if, as if he says, you Muslims, you who have been given Quran, and then you don't carry the Holy Quran properly, then the example of some of you who don't carry the Holy Quran properly is like the example of a donkey who carries a load of books which are full of information, but the donkey doesn't know what am I carrying. This is a very important information from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. What does he want then? He wants us when we carry Quran, we should understand what is in the Holy Quran in order for us to apply the meanings of the Holy Quran. Now, when we look at the relationship between Abi Abdullah al Hussein and the Holy Quran, we come to understand that number one, Rasulullah Muhammad ibn Abdullah ابن عبد المطالب صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد رسول الله shows us the relationship between Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein and the Holy Quran. What does he say? إني تارك فيكم الثقلين كتاب الله وإترتي أهل بيتي. I leave behind me 
the holy book Quran and my holy household. Imam Abi Abdullah is min ahli al-bayt. So inni tarikun fikum al-thakalain. At the time of Imam Amir al-Mu'minin, inni tarikun fikum al-thakalain kitab Allah wa Ali ibn Abi Talib at his time. At the time of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Rasulullah it is as if said, inni tarikun fikum al-thakalain kitab Allah wal Hassan ibn Ali. At the time of Imam Hussein, it is as if Rasulullah says, inni tarikun fikum al-thakalain kitab Allah wa Abi Abdullah al-Hussein. Aw wa Aba Abdullah al-Hussein. And for other a'imma alayhi musalam is like that. Because thakalain is kitab and ahlul bayt. Each one of ahlul bayt represent the itra. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So that's number one. When we come to know that there is relationship between the Holy Quran and the itra, we find that the relationship between Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam and the Holy Quran was like that. Now, when we come now to look at Aba Abdullah, we come to understand that he was in the Baitin Nubuwa. You know what does it mean? Baitin Nubuwa, it means Jibrail, when Jibrail used to bring Wahi to the house of the Holy Prophet, Imam Hussein alayhi salam was there. He could hear the communication. Even he could feel the movement sometimes of Jibrail. Not only that, we understand the story that which says when Imam Hassan and Hussein were babies and when they are in their cradles and you know swing which we put the babies to swing yeah sometimes Jibrail would come and start to push the swing for Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhi salam when we talk about their relationship with the Holy Quran it means Quran was revealed in the house which Hassan and Hussein alayhi salam were there when we talk about Imam Hussein and the Holy Quran, we see the relationship is so mateen, so strong. And this is Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Now, when we come to look at the Holy Quran, we find that he practiced the Holy Quran. Practiced the Holy Quran. And that's why when he was coming back from Medina to go to Iraq, what did he say? Inni lam akhruj ashiran wala batiran. Wala mufsidan, wala zaliman, bal kharajtu li talab al-islah fi ummati jaddi. What do you want Aba Abdullah? Uridu an amura bil ma'aruf wa anha anil munkar wa asira bisirati jaddi. Now here he says, Uridu an amura bil ma'aruf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lil nas ta'muruna bil ma'aruf. You see the practice of Aba Abdullah? It is as if he says, all I want to do is for me to make sure I am going to establish this Qur'an. This is my relationship with the Holy Qur'an. This ilaka is, is ilaka tatbiqiyya. Imam Abi Abdullah yuridu an yutubbik al-Qur'an. Laysa fakat yuridu an yakra al-Qur'an. Wa hunaka farqun fi thalika kama sofa nara. So now when we look at us, us as followers of Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein. We attend these majalis of Abba Abdullah. Year on, year out. Year in, year out. Every year and every Muharram, we are there. What is our relationship with the Holy Quran? Ya Shia, Shia ta Ali, Shia ta al Hassan, Shia ta al Hussein alayhi salam. What is our relationship with the Holy Quran? Abba Abdullah is good, very good. Abba Abdullah is safe. But what about you and me when it comes to the Holy Quran? Now we find there are three things. When we look at the Holy Quran, these three things will come to us every time. Number one, Quran, we need to read it. Read the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say? وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا Read the Holy Quran with its measures. Read the Holy Quran with the ahkam. 
Read the Holy Quran the way Rasulullah used to read. Read the Holy Quran the way Zahara used to read. The way Amir al muminin used to read. Read the Holy Quran the way Imam Hassan used to read. They read the Holy Quran the way Imam Abi Abdullah used to read the Holy Quran. And we are informed when Imam Hassan used to recite the Holy Quran, people, if they were to pass in front of his house, they would stop. They would be captured by the beautiful voice of the recitation of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. So to read Quran, this we call it a basic, basic principle which we need to apply. Question, how many of us, we read Quran? How many of us, we have a program to say every morning, every evening, every day, every week, I will recite the Holy Quran. Don't take this as offen offense to you and to myself too, brothers. Wallahi, we love, we love Dua Komel. Some of us, when we miss Majlis Dua of Dua Komel, we feel like something is missing, isn't it? But how many of us, we have a program every week to recite the Holy Quran, just to recite Quran, read it. And we give ammunition to our enemies. Sometimes they say, you Shias, you have your own, any, uh, you have other Quran. What do you mean by that? We don't see you guys reading Quran the way it's supposed to be recited. Basic thing, Imam Abi Abdullah, Quran for him is everything. I'm not saying this is the norm of every Shia. No, MashaAllah, there are many, many good Shias and many youngsters, even many old, they recite Quran. But for us, that recitation of the Holy Quran is not with us. Can I blame the young ones here? Or can I blame the parents? You know, there is information which says, Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, salawatullahi wa Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. When Imam Abi Abdullah was in Medina, before these problems between him and uh, Yazid started, there was a teacher of the Holy Quran in the city of Medina. Imam Abi Abdullah assigned the teacher to teach Quran to his son, son of Imam Hussein. Masum, Imam Masum, he knows Quran, he could teach Quran to his family. But he said, No, I want this teacher. He was one of the best teachers of the Quran. Come and teach my son. And he came, he taught Quran. When he finished the job, Imam alayhi salam gave him more than thousand dirham. And people were like, Abba Abdullah, you are giving him too much. He said, no, 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 this is nothing compared to the job which he has done to teach my son Quran. And if I wish, I would give him even more. Now, compare our teachers who teach Quran within our communities and our attitudes towards the Holy Quran. The teachers of the Holy Quran at this center, Jazakumullahu Khair al jaza. You are doing very good. You find that in America there are students from this Jamia, Alhamdulillah, they are good in recitation of the Holy Quran. But unfortunately, we as the community, we don't value you guys. We see you like you don't have any job to do. Why? You teach Quran? What does it mean? And this is the way we treat the teachers of the Holy Quran. Nastaghfirullah. It is a bad thing for us to do. We need to treat them as special, te special teachers and people. Why? In the, in the Akhirah, on the Day of Judgment, when people are going to be judged, there will be a group of people who will go to paradise. Angels will tell them, Iqra warqa. You used to recite Quran, now read this Quran and go another higher step in paradise. Iqra warqa. Because you're a special person. Quran is so important, but we are saying the basic is just to read Quran. This is basic. What is the next step we need to do after we have completed the basic? And from the basic, we shouldn't stop in the basic. Because basic is just to read the Quran and then we go further. Number two, what are we supposed to do? 
we need to establish quran iqamatul quran and by iqamatul quran it is very important for us to establish it in our lives we need to have establishment of the holy quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al maida ayah 68 he says bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul ya ahl al kitab qul ya ahl al kitab lastum ala shay hatta tuqimu at tawrat wal injil wa ma unzila ilaykum mir rabbikum surah al maida surah number 5 ayah 68 qul ya ahl al kitab say o oh, people of the book lastum ala shay you are nothing you don't have anything in other words you are a loser you are losers hatta tuqimu at wal injil until you establish the torah and you establish the bible and you establish other rules which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down, down them for you qul ya ahl al kitab lastum ala shay'in hatta tuqimu at tawrat wal injil wa ma unzila ilaykum mir rabbikum now remove the word ahl al kitab put here the word muslims oh muslims you are nothing if you don't establish quran you are nothing because quran is the book which when you establish it and you follow it properly you will be some some people you will be something you will be having that respect so number two we need to establish quran in order for us to get the blessings from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number three allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about hamlul quran so what have we seen so far tilawatil quran iqamatul quran hamlul quran and hamlul quran is ayah number two surah number 62 surah al juma bismillahir rahmanir rahim ماذا يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى مثل الذين حملوا التوراه ثم لم يحملوها حمل القران we need to carry this quran with us in order for the holy quran to be applied in our lives sometimes i don't understand dear brothers dear muslims dear shias why sometimes when we see those people who are new muslims they enter into islam they become better and better than us when it comes to recitation of the holy quran applying the meanings of the holy quran where are we why we neglect this book and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places in the holy quran he says walaqad yassarna alquran lidhikri fahal min mudakir we have made this quran easy for remember for reminder is there anyone to remember we have made the holy quran easy what am i talking about dear brothers and sisters about the holy quran why because we have neglected the holy quran if we neglect quran we have neglected ourselves and we are doomed to fail now it is here what do we need my humble suggestion is as follows number one dear brothers and sisters we need the culture of the holy quran culture of the holy quran what do i mean by that culture is like now i see some youngsters they carry their phones and they browse the phone while the majlis is going on alhamdulillah if you browse your phone for you to look at the eye of the holy quran is good that's the culture of the holy quran i'm talking about the culture of the holy quran is the like those people who when they wake up in the morning at night they follow something they will go for it and they will make sure they are with it all the time culture of the holy quran when we talk about the holy quran unfortunately i see sometimes in our communities we cannot even mention 50 uh, 50 surahs of the holy quran very basic thing names only culture of the holy quran it means that we are we are there with the holy quran culture of the holy quran 
we read the holy quran the way ahlul bayt alayhi musalam used to read culture of the holy quran it means that we have competitions of the holy quran culture of the holy quran we have conferences of the holy quran we culture of the holy quran we are there with the holy quran all the time this is the culture of the holy quran we are talking about number two this one needs collective efforts it's not a job of one person or a community of few people we need many people to work together sometimes for parents sorry for me to say this especially those who do, we do not speak english better than our children when we come to these countries we allow and we encourage our children to to buy books different books some of them even bigger and, and, and heavier than even their, their, their ability to carry those books. And we encourage them to read these books every night. But then we don't sit down with, with them to recite the Holy Quran. Now the question here is, when I'm dead, and when we say, let us recite Surah Yasin for the Marhum, and my son doesn't know how to read Quran, my, my daughter doesn't know how to read Quran. Who will recite that Surah Yasin for me? And we have witnessed sometimes even the recitation of Surah Yasin is a wrong recitation. Followers of Ali bin Abi Talib, the one who said while few minutes before he passed away, Allah, Allah fi kitabillah. Allah, Allah fi kitabillah. I remind you, I remind you, I remind you in the name of Allah, don't neglect the book of Allah. And then Imam, what does he say? No one should overtake you in applying the, the teachings of the Holy Quran. No one should overtake you. We don't see that within our communities. It is if uh, Abba Abdullah learned from his father and that's why you see his relationship with the Holy Quran is so good. Collective efforts is needed here. And we need to encourage. I don't, I don't think that if we approach people to support programs where we can have many activities of Quran, recitation, memorization, knowing the meanings like other communities are doing now in Europe, we can manage to reach somewhere. If we ask those people who have ability to contribute their money, for these programs we will reach somewhere another thing which we need is lifestyle of quran lifestyle what do we mean by lifestyle if i see an ayah wherever is written it shouldn't be a difficult thing for me to read it lifestyle of the holy quran when we give gifts for example we have these frames which the verses of the holy quran are written culture of the lifestyle of the holy quran is the lifestyle of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Lifestyle of the Holy Quran is the lifestyle of Bibi Fidda. Uh, we hear the story of Fidda. That noble lady, according to his history, they say Fidda came from Habasha. Habasha, I don't know what was so special with Habasha. Bilal al-Habashi, Fidwa al-Habashiya. Fidwa, they say this Fidwa was a queen with her tribe. And Fidwa left the community when she heard that there is in Medina a group. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Muhammad. I'm sorry brothers, I, I hear a lot of noise from that section. Can we please do something? Okay, then... Sisters at the corner there, can you please uh, make sure if there are youngsters who are talking and making noise, they are interrupting the majlis. Now we are stopping the majlis because of them. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. <coughs> this, this is exactly what we are talking about, the culture of the Holy Quran. If the Holy Quran is, myth is missing within our communities, these are the outcome which we are going to face. Because Quran is mi'tah. Quran gives you. You go to the Holy Quran, it gives you plenty. If Quran is missing, we are in trouble. And that's why the Holy Prophet says, Inni tarikun fikum He didn't say anything else. Thakalain, kitab Allahi wa itrati ahla bayti. Now, Fiddha, according to information, she came from Habasha. We hear that Fiddha, this noble lady, she left her kingdom. She left whatever she had to become a servant of Fatima to Zahra. Salamullahi alayha. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Fiddha was not a poor woman. Fiddha was not a destitute woman. But because she understood in the Holy Quran there is ayah which says, Kulla as'alukum alayhi ajra illal mawaddata fil qurba. I do not ask you anything. Rasulullah is told by Allah, tell the Muslims, I do not ask you any reward for my work which I do, except I want you to love my Ahlul Bayt. Just love them. Fidwa loved Ahlul Bayt. She left Habasha to come to be with Fatima to Zahra. When we are in Majlis of Aba Abdullah like this one, we leave whatever we leave because we love Ahlul Bayt. Kulla as'alukum alayhi ajra illa al mawaddata fil qurba. We love Aba Abdullah. We are ready to sacrifice our phones, our short times which we have. Majlis is only 10 or 11 days. And then we'll go back to our normal life. We sacrifice that because we love Aba Abdullah. And if we love him, Allah will love us. It's very clear. Now Fidwa came to Medina. She said to Zahra, I want to become your servant. The way, mashallah, I like the, the proverb with Iraqi brothers and sisters. Khadimuk. Ana khadim. I'm a servant. I'm at your service. She said, I want to be a servant of Zahra. Why? She was a very intelligent woman. She serves. And with Zahra, she will never become like a slave. One day she works, another day Zahra works. Where have you seen that? One day Fidwa works, another day Zahra says, no, today you are off. It's my duty. Tomorrow is your duty, the day after is mine. Fidwa learns from Zahra. What does she learn? Quran. Quran to the sense that Fidwa becomes Al-Quranun Natiq. When we talk that Imam Amirul Muminin was Al-Quranun Natiq, a speaking Quran, Fatima to Zahra speaking Quran, Imam Hassan speaking Quran, Hussein speaking Quran, even their servants are speaking Quran. Fidwa talks Quran. She lived the life after the death of Aba Abdullah. When she met with people, they ask her questions, she answers with the Holy Quran. Allahu Akbar. This is the lifestyle of the Holy Quran which we talk about. The lifestyle of Quran, you become Quran un -natik. You are asked a question, your answer is Quran. If we have this lifestyle, we will see barakah within our houses and our communities. And it is here now, my dear brothers, to conclude this majlis, we need four things. Number one, we need to read Quran from cover to cover, from Surah to Nas to Surah Fatiha to Nas or Baqarah to Fatiha, all the 114 surahs. To the way that when we pray Jama'a, Imam of Salatul Jama'a makes a mistake, we correct him. But we have been in some communities where Imam makes mistakes. And no one notices that there is a mistake. Why? Because we don't recite Quran. And we follow. Number one, we need to read Quran. Let us promise Abba Abdullah. Ya Abba Abdullah, if there is nothing we can do for you, but we promise you, we will be people of Quran. We will be reading Quran. Number two, when we read Quran, let us memorize Quran. Let us memorize and become Hafiz who fath of the Holy Quran. Our maraji, mashallah. Scholars in the houses, mashallah. 
Even some Islamic colleges now, mashallah, students memorize Quran. And Quran, wallahi, is kareem. You don't need age limit. You don't need gender. You can memorize Quran in 60 or oh, 60s. You can recite Quran while you are a young baby. Quran, you give your time, it gives yourself. It gives itself to you. Quran, you don't need to be an Arab for you to be able to recite and memorize Quran. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabiya. Lakin, walaqad yassarna al-Quran al-dhikr. Fahal min muddake. Yassarnahu bilisanik. Allah has made it easy for Arabs, for non-Arabs. Number three, when we have read Quran, we have memorized Quran. Number three, we need to understand the meaning of the Holy Quran. Understanding the meaning is very important because why? Then we can get the hidayah. We cannot get the hidayah guidance if we don't understand the meanings of the Holy Quran. And that's very important. That's why we have tafsir of the Holy Quran. Number four, we need to apply Quran in our lives. When we apply the Holy Quran in our lives, there will be no mashakil. For example, the Holy Quran says, Ya ayuhaladina amanu, la ta'akulu amwalakum bil batil. Don't consume your wealth in a wrong way. Cheating, tricks, and so on and so forth. When we apply the Holy Quran in our lives, people will admire us. And they will say, we want to become like you guys. What makes you to be so special? We say Quran. Who brought this Quran? Allah. They will come and learn the Holy Quran better than us. Unfortunately, nowadays, we have come to see there is a group of Christians. They read Quran. They memorize Quran. They come to challenge Muslims through Quran. Now, you imagine you meet with a Christian who reads Quran and he comes, he challenges you through the Holy Quran. And you don't know the Holy Quran. What are you going to say? It will be a calamity for me if I see someone who is known a Muslim. He reads Quran better than me. And he challenges me through the Holy Quran. And I say, I am a follower of Al-Kitab wal Itra, Thakalain. It is here we need to change. We need to go back to re recitation, memorization, understanding the meaning, and then apply. Finally, in our majlis tonight, who among the companions Imam Abi Abdullahi alayhi salam praised him and he prayed for him while he was in his sacratil mount and even after his death. When we look at the companions of Abba Abdullahi al Hussein alayhi salam, we understand that either they were 72 or 102 or more than that. When you go for the ziyar of Abba Abdullah, you enter the haram in Karbala. You go to the section where there are names of Ashab, you find many names, more than 72. One of those companions was Habib bin Madahir al-Asadi. Habib bin Madahir al-Asadi, scholars are saying that either he was a companion Sahaba of Rasulullah, or he was not at the time of the Holy Prophet. So there is a dispute here. Majority of scholars, they say, he was not a Sahabi. However, he was a Sahabi of Amirul Mu'mineen. He was a companion of Maulana Amirul Mu'mineen, and he fought all the battles with Amirul Mu'mineen. And Amirul Mu'mineen liked him because why? He was a hero. We understand that Habib bin Madahir, after the death of Amirul Mu'mineen, he became a follower of Imam Hassan. And he was with Imam Hassan alayhi salam. When Imam Hussein alayhi salam was in Medina, Muawiyah died. The people of Kufa who wrote the letter, Habib bin Madahir was one of them. Noble people of Kufa. And that's why when you read his biography, he's known as Habib bin Madahir al-Kufi. Why? He came from the city of Kufa. Now, Habib bin Madahir, when Muslim bin Akil came to Kufa, he was welcomed by the noble people. Hani bin Urwa and Habib bin Madahir, Muslim bin Ausaja, they were together, they welcomed him. Now when Umar 
bin, uh, when Ubaidillah bin Ziyad entered the city of Kufa and he started killing the people of Kufa, Habib bin Madahir managed to escape the city of Kufa, went outside, him, Muslim bin Awsaja, and they were waiting for the Imam because they knew Imam Hussein alayhi salam is coming. And it was on the seventh day of Muharram, they joined the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. They begged for forgiveness. Ya Aba Abdullah, forgive us. We left the city of Kufa because if we didn't, we would be killed. We had to go out of the city. Forgive us. Imam alayhi salam forgave them. Now on the 10th, before the 10th, the 8th, the 9th, Habib bin Madahir, he sees the number of the soldiers of Umar bin Sa'ad, Ubaidillah bin Ziyad, I keep coming to the land of Karbala. Habib bin Madahir came to Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam and he said, Ya Aba Abdullah, allow me to go to talk to the people of my tribe. Which tribe? Banu Asad. I want to talk to them. Maybe they will listen to me and they will come to your rescue. Aba Abdullah said, No problem, you go talk to your Kabila, talk to your tribe. Maybe they may come. He goes, Habib bin Madahib, to talk to the people of Bani Asad. He convinced them that this is Ibn Rasulullah. How can you leave Ab Aba Abdullah, Ibn Fatima al Zahra alone? These people are going to kill him. Come, Banu Asad, help him. They accepted because they listened from one of them. And they decided to come to join the army of Aba Abdullah in big group but however they were overpowered the army of Ubaidillah bin Ziyad they stopped them and they couldn't join Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam Habib bin Madai returned maybe with few people who managed to escape now came the day of Ashura Habib bin Madai according to the history they say he was that stu uh, student of Imam Amirul Mu'minin who was told and he was taught by Amirul Mu'mineen Ilmul Balaya Wal Manaya the science which you can know the events which will happen before the events happen you come to know Imam Amirul Mu'mineen taught Habib bin Madahi that and not only that he taught him the science that he could see the signs if someone is going to die he may know that Habib bin Madahir before, when he was with Amirul Mu'mineen, he used to meet with Maithamut Tammar. We mentioned his story yesterday. Maithamut Tammar and Habib bin Madahir, they use like jokes to joke to one another. Habib bin Madahir says, oh Maitham, Amirul Mu'mineen taught me. It is as if I see you have been crucified on the palm tree after your tank has been cut off. And it is here, Maitha Muttamar, he himself also was a student of Amirul Mumin. He say, oh Habib, it is as if I see your head, the sword is penetrating your head when you are with Aba Abdullah. This is the way they were. And they joke, they talk as if it was something easy, normal to bear. Now comes the day of Ashura. Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein. now, he wants the Ashab to go and help him. The Ashab themselves come and they go to fight. Habib bin Madahir goes, him and Muslim bin Awsaja. They fight in a way that no one has seen an old man. How old Habib bin Madahir was? 75 years of age. He comes, he fights like a young man. He fights, he kills many people. According to history, maybe he killed 60 people in the army of Yazid and it was here Habib bin Madahir when he fights he see Muslim bin Awsaja has been injured Muslim bin Awsaja is on the ground Habib bin Madahir goes near Muslim bin Awsaja and he says I feel sorry oh Muslims you are going before me but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you Muslim bin Awsaja was injured he speaks now in a very low voice, he says to Habib bin Madahir, Oh Habib, you look at Aba Abdullah. 
don't let him be alone when the time comes and no one will be there. Allahu Akbar. This is in Sakrat al Mount. Habib bin Madahir says, Yes, Muslim, I'll be with Aba Abdullah and I will never leave him alone. He passes away. Habib bin Madahir fights until his time comes. They attack him and the sword comes on his forehead. They split the head with the sword and someone hit him with the spear. He fell on the ground. And it was here Imam Abi Abdullah sees Habib bin Madahir. He comes to him and he says, Oh Habib, may Allah reward you for what you have done in protection of Abba Abdullah. May Allah reward you. And it was here he says, I bear witness, O oh Habib, you are very close to the Holy Quran. Habib, you are the one who used to recite the whole of the Holy Quran. In one night you used to finish the whole recitation of the Holy Quran. Imam alayhi salam prays for him. And Habib now has passed away. After the martyrdom of Imam Abi Abdullah on the day of Ashura, Bani Asad, they come now to bury those people who were killed, all the men who were with Imam Abi Abdullah. Now, can you imagine, dear brothers and sisters, yeah? Those bodies who were with Abi Abdullah, most of them, they don't have heads. Their heads have been chopped off. Banu Asad, they come, they, they look at their people, they see Habib bin Madahir. They bury Imam Hussein in one section and in other places. And then they take the body of Habib bin Madahir. They place him near the grave of Abba Abdullah. If today you were to go for the ziyar of Imam Hussein in Karbala, you would see that Ashab are in one section. But only Habib has got his own grave. Why? Because the tribe of Bani Asad, they said we have to bury him here. They bury uh, Habib bin Madahir where he is, people go for the ziyara and they get baraka there. We ask the question, O oh, Mu'mineen, when Habib bin Madahir has his qabila to come and bury him, that was easy. But for Abba Abdullah, according to one narration, he says, Umar bin Sa'ad gave an order for the body to be trampled. And the bodies were going to be trampled. When they wanted to trample the body of Habib bin Madahir, his tribe rejected that. But when they look at the body of Abba Abdullah, Umar bin Sa'ad said, I want you to trample the body of Abba Abdullah. Why? Because there was no any Qabila to defend Abba Abdullah. Imam Sajjad Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. When he went back to Medina after the calamity of Karbala, he says, when we buried our father, there was no any bone. There was no any bone which was intact in the body of Abba Abdullah. Can you imagine they say when the horses were trampling the body of Abba Abdullah, you could hear the, the bones, the ribs were broken. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Wa sayalamu alladhina dhalamu ayyamun kalabin yankalibu.